guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lisa, and I am so excited to share with you my brand new makeup channel. And as you've probably been able to see from a couple of my looks so far, they may be a little bit involved just because I love the creativity and the art of makeup. But even for someone who likes simple makeup, even for beginners, I hope that there's some little tidbit that you can take away and put it in your back pocket and incorporate it into your makeup routine. So I'm excited to share with you all things makeup and I can't wait to hear your comments and suggestions. And that said, let's go on to the look and thank you so much for hanging out with me and let's do it. All right guys, here we go. This is the Fall Burgundy look, and this is using the Anastasia, the Norvina 5 palette. Now, this is a wonderful palette, although I am going to tell you, well, I'll wait till we get there. I'm going to try to hold my horses. Okay, we're going to start with Nivea Cream, which is one of my favorite moisturizers. You do have to, it, it's, there's something hydrophobic about it, so if there's any wetness or any kind of moisture on your hands or your face, it will, you'll, you'll feel it and it kind of is harder to um, blend in. But that is a very thick, wonderful moisturizer. I think Marilyn Monroe may have used it and if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. So this is um, another wonderful product that I use for moisturizing and it's the Biosense Squalene and Tea Tree Oil, which smell, to me, this smells amazing and it's such a treat every time I put it on so we are gonna use this we're not really doing foundation today so we're gonna put in a little concealer with the Sephora pointed foundation brush and we are gonna use this three custom color um, concealer and this next to my Kevin Aquan sensual skin enhancer this is one my top one of my top concealers and you can see look how nicely it blends in there and um, this is just a great creamy shade it doesn't really crease and it's easy to use there aren't you know there's nothing difficult about using this product and there shouldn't any ever be anything difficult about using products but sometimes we know that there are challenges um, you will notice sometimes in this video the camera goes in and out, which may make you want to curse. It has made me want to curse in the past, but it's such a beautiful look that we're going with it. We're just doing it. This is Painterly MAC Paint Pot on the top with e.l.f. Putty Primer. Now, I actually mixed the two together, and this is going to be my eye base. And I love the way that it neutralizes. And I just, I always like to put um, a, a shadow on top of something. But this is a great neutralizer and primer all in one. And I don't know, I thought it was pretty genius to mix the two. And so far it's done a nice job. I will still put on top of this my silicone powder. There it is with my Chikahoto brush. And that's the T6 large eyeshadow brush. But I still feel like this, you know, you can see it sort of, it makes it a little bit less shiny. And just that, that's, to me, that's just a great base. Okay, so we're moving on to bronzer. And we're going to use this big badass Sephora buffing brush. And we're going to use this with the Rockin' Republic. This is Chenille. This is a bronzer. This is way too bronze for me, as in way too orange for me. But I, I have it. It's not going anywhere. So sometimes I like to play with it. And in this video, we're definitely playing with it. So I, you can see me getting in there. I'm not that shy about getting in there. But I think in the end, it mixes with all the other face the, the, of the other oils and the concealer and the foundation and the highlighter. So I feel like once it's all done, you don't really, it doesn't really stand out that it's 
much of a bronzer. But yeah, generally I'm, I more prefer either something less bronzy or a cooler contour color. But this is a, this is a great, this is a very finely milled bronzer and fun to use. Yeah, still getting in there. Okay, so we are going to use, I haven't been doing my brows with this because sometimes it's hard to catch it on camera, but I'm going to use this wonderful Wayne Goss 21 eyebrow brush. This is a very long brush and it's stiff. You can see the bristles and this is just a fantastic, very underrated brush. And this is a fantastic palette. This is the Viseart Brow Palette, although you can use the only colors that I really would use as an eyeshadow was the middle row, which are actually beautiful colors. But the, the very first column is like a cream. So you kind of mix the cream, you mix the brush into the cream, those first row, either the top, middle, or the bottom. The bottom is obviously the deepest. And then you dip the brush, you can kind of mix and match, see which shades you like. But that worked really well. I don't have many eyebrows. I have like 10 hairs, so that helps me get the shape. We're going to use this shader brush with a Coastal Sense um, concealer. Well, it's sort of a concealer um, palette, but I use this to sort of refine and define the shape. And this brush is extremely flat and really easy to use. It's, you can see it's really wonderful to get in there. And this is a great product. You can almost even use this as a highlighter. I usually use one of the flesh colored ones, not the white or the yellow. And this is a staple product for me. And I just get in there and I'm cleaning up my lines. And sometimes I can make my, um, I can make the, the arch a little bit more defined but this just gives me a little bit of control, highlights, and defines all in one. And this is not a necessary step, but if you're someone like me who just doesn't have a lot of eyebrows, doesn't have a lot of hairs, this is a really nice step. And this is a really nice brush for this. Just a really flat synthetic brush. And now we're gonna go in with our Shiseido Chiyoko Whipped Blush, and I'm going to use this with my Max Stippling 130 Duo Fiber Brush. This is this gets in there great, and I love using this whipped blush. This is just such a candy pink, and it's so super pretty. I might have gone a little crazy in there, but I always go a little crazy with my blushes, but that's okay. This is a really fun product to use and this is a great brush because it just gets in there. It's not too harsh. And then we're gonna go in with our Sculpt 3 by Sonia G. You've seen this before. We're gonna go in with Oh Darling, which is a bit of a goldy, a goldy highlighter. Just getting that high cheekbone and then I always do kind of a C, go up into my temples a little bit. Just for that little bit of a glow, you can see that there and then the rest usually goes on my nose and my forehead. Oh, maybe not there. Okay, so let's start off. Okay, this, this color A4 all of the shades in this palette have some sort of rosy, well, not all of them, but that upper right quadrant, you can see that it almost looks brown, and you can see that E5 and C5 look brown. They are not brown, so do not be deceived. As you can see, this is A4. In the pan, it looks like a taupe, but as you can see in application, it is a rosy shade. I was not aware of this when I, when I first started playing with this palette. And we're going to use our Chikohoto, I think it's the G55 brush. 
Really just kind of bl just blending that in there, just getting in that in the crease, just laying that down is a nice transition. I do have kind of a funny little patch there on my right eye, which is do not, it's not the product that's causing the patch, it's my skin. So don't be alarmed. And then we're going in with my Look New York 11 Crease Contour Brush, one of my favorite brushes, a drugstore brush. And I'm just blending it. Because you might not think you even need to blend this part, but you, you always need to blend. Almost always need to blend. So we're just blending. I'm almost blending that highlight from the, um, from the, the concealer shades with the, that rosy taupe shade. Yeah, there's really a disparity between the color of that shade in, in practice and in the pan. So we're going to use Double Indemnity. This is Tom Ford. This is just a light shade, and this is just a metallic kind of light, whitish champagne shade. Not totally necessary, but still fun to do that, and I'm blending that. Blending that. You just get a little shine, just a little sparkle. Sometimes you gotta go in, see, because that sparkle sometimes gets on the brow, so you gotta refine. I wasn't so excited about using B1 because this is like a very golden, almost green shade. This was like a really an experiment here, but I actually it worked out. I wasn't sure how this I was gonna feel about this because this is a chunky formula. Okay, B5. I, we're going to use this with the Sonia Builder 2. Now, I would call this shade a rosy raisin. And as I wrote in my Instagram post, I feel like this gets shade of the year because it is so insanely pretty and it makes me sad because I don't feel like the video or the photos do it justice. But it is this rosy, chocolatey raisin shade. On its own, I didn't love it. I probably could have used water, it would have helped. So I'm gonna use my Real Techniques brush and my Carla Cosmetics Fix Potion, which you can see I just put a small layer, just a very thin layer of that on there. And then look how magical, look, you get such great payoff. So it's just kind of a sticky gel um, and you just need a little bit of it, but look how beautifully that packs on. I mean, that is spectacular. I mean, tell me that's not the seventh wonder of the world. Eighth. Ninth? Anyhow, this is a fantastic shade, and I did not want to take this off. So I'm lifting. I'm lifting. As you can see right there, I'm getting up into the brow bone. I'm blending that a little bit into the crease. And I'm still just kind of packing it on. So beautiful. And I'm taking my, the brush that I used to buff before, I'm just, I'm blending that because you can see those harsh lines and we don't want those. So that is blending nicely. Just blending that out, buffering it, feathering it, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you have to apply a little pressure in certain spots more so than others to blend it. And then I'm going in with my I used this shade, this brush for that original rosy shade, that one that looks like taupe, but it's rose. So I was just blending that. So we're using the Refer 13, and we're going to go in with a little deeper shade. It's that one all the way in the corner, the A5. And we are going to place that right there, right kind of at that junction of B5 and A4 those two shades and just really marry that and blend everything together and I'm gonna take that under the eye a little bit connect the upper and the lower a little bit and I'm not afraid to take that down so we're going in with A2 which is a really pretty peachy shade. I think it might have a little pink in it, but it's really beautiful. And we're going to use this in the inner corner on the Artiste Circle 1R brush. 
And I love the way this brush gets in there. And I'm actually, you can see I'm sweeping it into the inner third a little bit. So I'm real, and I probably, I know I'm taking this on the lower lash line too. So I'm just getting that in there. Yep. I think that's a really great spot to add a little bit of color right on that inner third of the lower lash line. But it just has such a nice reflex blending. And then we're going in with the deepest shade, E5, again with the Ruffer 13. And we're going to take this to deepen the lower lash line a little bit more. It's a little bit more eggplanty. And now we're going in with something a little fun. I love this shade. This is Night Creature from Pat McGrath. Now, it's not a huge difference in color it, with the Sigma E36. But there's a nice little purple pink, and I thought that it would just add a little dimension and a little sparkle, and it does. It's not a hugely different color, but it does add a pretty little distinction there. That's, that's one of my favorite colors. I don't use it often enough, but it's beautiful. What am I looking for? Probably my sanity. There it is. And we're just taking that, that's the peachy shade, and I'm just blending that in a little bit more. And this is my Makeup Forever and the Inglot Duraline, which is my favorite combination on the Rockin' Republic Smudge Shader. This is just a tiny, tiny shader brush. Again, I take one little dot of Duraline and I put it on either some foil, I'm drying my lids so I can get that on there, put a little drop of the Duraline on either a palette or a foil something, I dip the brush in there and then I dip the brush into the Makeup Forever and that kind of helps it become creamy. So I'm using that to deepen the waterline to totally darken that and I always take that down a little bit further so I get some black on my lower lash line. And now we're going to do the upper inner that upper water line. Again you don't have to do this step this is not a step that everybody loves and you can even just do the lower lash line if you wanted. You could do one or the other but I like a dark lash line and I feel like after doing it for all these years, I feel like I don't even look like it myself without it. And you got to get a brush that's comfortable. Okay, so now we're using the Makeup Forever Aqua, uh, Aqua XL. This is like a paint. And I'm using actually that same brush, that small shader. This was a this is a discontinued product, but it was a great product because it literally is like a paint. So it was just very easy to work with. And I'm getting in there and I'm getting kind of a thicker, a thicker line. I know it's going out of focus. Yep. Yep. The most crucial moment. And now we're gonna go in with this purple, this D3. And we're going to use this on my one of my favorite brushes, this Wayne Goss 08 brush. This is the smallest, cutest brush you will ever meet in your entire life. And it is perfection. I know it's blurry. You can get a little sense of what we're doing, though. We are putting that D3, just a hint of a purple sparkle, right above, not on top of, but right kind of above that black lash line and smudging it and then I'm taking that almost vertically that brush and I'm just kind of wiping what's left on the lower lash line. Then we're going in with a black and we're just going to intensify that. Oh the camera. But we're going to intensify that. We're using that tiny little brush. Just marry everything there. Just make everything nice in a soft transition, a nice gradient. It's always about a nice gradient. And 
And then we're going to go in again with that purplish shade. And we're just going to add a little bit. We're using this on that, the Sigma E36 again. That's a very tiny brush. And I'm just adding that in the, in the very corner there. Just in the very corner, just to get a little extra depth. Get some of those purple sparkles on there. Nothing too crazy. Blending it in. Yep, I told you you'd be cursing by this point in the camp in the in the video. But it is well worth it for this look. Okay, there's me, shocker, putting on more blush. And then it's mascara time, which I always feel like that's the big reveal. So we're going to curl the lashes. And all lashes, I feel like, should be curled. It always makes such a, such a difference, long or short. And then we're going to go in with our first coat of Voluminous. Just get that first base there, just to separate, get it on there. And I like to do that. I like to kind of rub it back and forth because I feel like it picks up the lashes while it does that at the same time. Okay, so we're going to try Donatella. This is Donatella Pat McGrath. I felt like this was not the color for this look. And I knew right away. No. No, no. So we're going to blot that. And then we're going to go back in with something a little more appropriate and a little more complimentary. So we're gonna go in with Madame Grage from Pat McGrath. And you can see right away, it makes such a difference. Yeah, that color was meant to be with this look. I think that just pulls together those rosy raisin shades a lot nicer. And we're going to use Max Stone to flush that out a little bit because my lips are uneven. So I like to use that to make it full, a little bit fuller. Just a little bit. Max Stone is such a great color. It's such a versatile color. Even on, I use it even on lipsticks that don't. Right there, I'm very uneven. I have to flush that out. But yeah, I use Stone almost, I use it very frequently even on shades that don't match it, just because it adds a really nice, it, it works really well. And then here we go with the, still a Magnum. This is the kind of like the XL mascara. And it really separates, it really widens those lashes, gives you that sort of faux lash look. And that's the look. I mean, it felt beautiful. That look, that purple from Night Creature, that purple from the palette, the rosy raisin, that sort of peachy shade. I felt like they all came together really beautifully. So if you like this and you put it on Instagram, your version of it, please tag me in RGRP inspo. And I would love to see and see your creations and hear your comments. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you on my next video. Bye.